<clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. This is J.R. Flatter for your latest session of the Secrets of Leadership Coaching. Our distinguished guest this session is Janelle Donahue. And Janelle, I'm going to let you introduce yourself because you'll do a much better job at it than I ever could. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Jr. Well, um, hello, everybody. I'm Janelle Donahue. Um, professionally, I'm the president of Rappahannock United Way and um, been at United Way for over 20 years now and in this position for over 11. Uh, it's such a privilege to work with our community and to be able to give back. If uh, I wasn't doing this professionally, I'd be a full-time volunteer anyway. So um, it's, it's a pleasure to do this. And um, I'm very proud to say I started my career uh, with the Marine Corps. They have my heart. Mm -hmm. I was uh, at uh, Quantico Marine Corps Base and I was Janelle in personnel. I thought I would <laughs> focus on human resources and personnel. Um, but there I, I became involved with the Combined Federal Campaign and fell in love with corporate philanthropy. I moved on to another corporation and helped to run their United Way campaign and March of Dimes, etc. And I just loved the philanthropy part of it and giving back to the community and then had the opportunity to move to Rappahannock United Way. And, and there I've had so many wonderful experiences and working with such a wide variety of people that um, it required leadership. Um, there was nothing in my daily routine that didn't require leadership. And then I had kids. I have two teenagers and that requires leadership every day. Um, and so I find that everything in my life um, relates to the leadership journey that I've been on. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about myself. So I have the privilege of facilitating Leadership Fredericksburg alongside you. I know you're deeply involved in your community, not only in the nonprofit that you run, but in our Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about your experiences developing other leaders outside of the United Way. Well, I um, have had the privilege of absolutely um, working with the Chamber of Commerce, who is a leader of leadership in our community. I was in the first new class of Leadership Fredericksburg uh, in 2008. Um, and at the time when I was invited to participate in it with my boss, um, I made all the excuses. I don't have time. This is in the middle of campaign season. And he said, you don't, you can't afford not to. And he couldn't have been more right. And so through that, uh, I was then afforded the opportunity to be a speaker at Leadership Fredericksburg and then been, to be able to influence, you know, the 20 plus people in every class um, has been a joy and led to other opportunities. I've worked with our Lions Club. I'm a Lion member of the Fredericksburg Host Lions Club. And, and there, uh, there are lots of leadership opportunities in the club and, and hosting nonprofit events and fundraisers and leadership. And so it's really been a life journey for me. My mom says that when I was just 18 months old, I used to line up all the kids in her daycare uh, and march them around the carport. So, uh, you know, girls get in trouble. We get to be called bossy. Uh, but we, we now call that leadership. Um, and so it's been a joy for me to learn and grow from tremendous leaders in the community. And, and I feel like everything you learn, you have to give back. Um, and so that's what, you know, I've done through Leadership Fredericksburg. I try to meet with new CEOs in the community, especially in the nonprofit world when they're uh, first becoming uh, the executive director, president, whatever it is. I try to meet with them and, and give them some encouragement, guidance, reality check, uh, and, and um, try to help them to be the best leaders that they can be. And I'm very open to that. If people call me, I typically will make time because it's part of my passion in life is to help grow other leaders. Great. I, I know part of that program that you work with the Chamber of Commerce is a 360 assessment. Mm -hmm. You coach the fellows through their 360 assessments do you find that valuable? Do they find it valuable? I think it's valuable for myself, but also to those fellows. Not very often in life do we get a, uh, a real look at how our, our managers see us, how our peers see us, how our uh, direct reports see us. Um, and I found that they not one person has ever walked away without one aha moment. They come in sometimes a little... Uh, on edge, wondering if it's just gonna be all negative uh, feedback, but they find that they're doing good work and they get 
they get that in writing. So they get to read it again. Um, the majority of them find it valuable. And then after talking to them years later, they, they want to do it again. Um, and that's not something they thought they would <laughs> on their first one. They didn't think they'd ever want to do it again, but um, being able to help people have some moments to, to read feedback and to reinterpret it maybe for them as they may be reading it one way. And so, well, have you thought about it this way? Um, the other rewarding piece of that, that, feedback, that 360 feedback is I find so often is the way we perceive ourselves is very different than the way other people perceive our, us. If you're, if you're really a, a person who focuses on growing and being a leader, um, I think sometimes we're harsher on ourselves uh, because we know what's inside of us. Um, but it's really rewarding when those fellows see that um, maybe you feel a lot of anxiety and stress and tension but that doesn't come out in the feedback. And I'm like, wow, you're really working on something that's not natural. And then they feel rewarded uh, for what they've been working on. And then they're more inspired to continue to work in what they're doing. I've been blessed in the LMAPs and the 360s I've done. At JR, I think they give you the hard ones. Um, mm -hmm. But I've been blessed to be able to, to give good news and to work with people who may think not as highly as other people think of them. Um, I haven't had one yet where the person totally thought they were awesome and everybody thought they, were, they had a lot of work to do. So uh, I, I'm waiting on that one. That'll be a challenge for me. Yeah, I've had one that really stands out that uh, he had very severe, well, that's too strong, yeah. very strong feedback from his peers and his bosses, and he just wouldn't accept any of it. And so that was really a challenge to work through that. So as an experienced coach providing that feedback, what lessons learned might you provide your peers? How do you prepare? How do you execute? How do you wrap it up? So I think, I think the, the way I, I look at it is, um, is really something you've said is look for the whispers um, and to look for what are the consistent things that people are saying over and over, not necessarily the same person, but what is coming up um, consistently and really focus on that. I had a 360 once and, um, well, I've had more than one, but, um, and I was, I was really digging into some of the details and my, my coach said, you know, focus on the themes, don't focus on the one-offs. And I think that's what we can do trying to figure out who said what or, and, and I think that's a lesson in life too is, don't focus on those one-off comments that you can't even figure out. Like you, like you can keep making the story up in your mind, but you really don't have the details. Focus on the consistent repeats that people are saying to you and focus on improving those or asking questions, learning more. Um, I encourage my fellows to go back and, and have a conversation. It's an excuse when you're in leadership to say, hey, I, I'm in this class or I'm in this pro program. And somebody gave me this feedback and I'm really looking for honesty, but can you tell me more about that? Like, what, what do you think this means? And I think people would be honest with you if you go with an open heart and say, hey, I'm just trying to learn instead of assuming, because I see for me, assuming gets me in trouble a lot. Um, and I'm really big on the story I'm telling myself. I think our minds create stories. And I think we, I know I usually get it wrong. And so I encourage those who I'm doing an LMAP is don't make assumptions um, and don't try to assume you understand because I think you would have already changed your behaviors if you understood what they were trying to say. So go back to your raters and just ask some general questions about what do you think this means? And maybe they didn't write it so they don't understand it, but if there's a theme, they're probably gonna be able to give you some advice. So I try to give encouragement. Um, and I try to also follow up with my fellows to say, hey, you promised you were going to come up with a plan to, to deal with X, Y, Z. Where are you on that? And sometimes you're like, oh, I've written it out and I'm ready to go. And others are like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be working on that. Well, how's, how's life improved since you haven't worked on it? Not great. So, Yeah, that's one of our themes of, of leadership coaching is to be an accountability partner, mm -hmm. which is really a, a unique role that you can fill. So I, I heard a moment ago, you hinted at this, if I'm able, I'm obligated theme. Mm -hmm. As you're reaching out of the community, working with new CEOs, working with the chamber, 
Talk to us a little bit about that thought process. Yeah, it's, um, and I, I think it's for every age and level. Um, but I guess when I was younger, I kind of thought I was, I was the student always and I had nothing to offer. And, and I'm learning now that I'm kind of in the middle of my road and journey in life is that, you know, it's just important for me to continue to be a student, but it's even more important for me to take what I've learned and share it with others. Um, and so I seek out opportunities like I was sharing with you with, um, you know, it's been a little while since I was a new CEO, um, but I, I very much remember how I felt uh, excited, scared, nervous, unworthy. Uh, and so I think it's very important to one, accept those offers when someone's brave enough to come and ask for advice, but to reach out and look, look around you and see who might you be able to offer um, support to. And, and I don't think everybody's open to it, um, but I think that, you know, it is, it is our job to reach out and help. And everybody does it differently. I, my son recently got a job and we were talking about saving and spending, but also giving back to the community. And he didn't necessarily want to give back to the community in the same way I did. But I said, well, you don't have to copy me. You just have to do it your own way. And he's found his own way to give back uh, that I necessarily wouldn't do. But I asked him why, and he had really good reasons. Um, and so I think if you're able you're obligated. Um, and that's why I'm in the Lions Club. It's a civic organization. Um, I wanted to connect with other people outside of my job, but I wanted to make a difference in the lives of our community. Um, the chamber is a great way to, to give and get, uh, to be able to, you know, network and, and, and see opportunity. Um, but it's a great way to meet people that are like you or like your business that you can connect with. And I try to do that in the nonprofit world as well. Being from United Way, I can't always give nonprofits money. Uh, I wish I could give all the money in the world, but what I can give a lot of times is my knowledge or even my connections. Mm -hmm. um, and that has been more invaluable to some than if we had given them a, a one-time grant. Sure. Um, because it's that connection, that networking opportunity has exceeded what any grant could have given them. Yeah, in your comments, you're affirming one of the fundamentals of relationship building, and that is give, give, give long mm -hmm. before you ever expect to receive. Right. That's great insight for our coaches as they're working with other leaders. So uh, we are called the secrets of leadership coaching. Right. So uh, as a distinguished guest, we'll ask you, give us one of your secrets. Um. Well, one of my secrets... Let's see. It's, it's kind of funny you call them secrets because um, I have leveraged them from other people. Uh, definitely none of my own ideas, um, but I'll share one that I most often share with with people. And that came from my mom. And uh, that is that we don't always have the ability to control what happens to us, but we always have the ability to control our response. Um, and I wish that was um, known wide and spread in the social media <laughs> world as people just seem to respond with the first thing they think of. Um, but my mantra is um, accept it, change it, or move on. Um, so often we feel stuck or um, not empowered or out of control. And that, that's just not always the case. You don't have control over what happens to you in your life, maybe over your health or your job or how your boss is acting or your kids or partner, but you always have the ability to control how you respond and you can accept where you are and, and just accept it. That's the way it's going to be. And, and don't stress over that. Uh, you can change it. You know, you can have a crucial conversation. You can, uh, organize something differently, or, you know, we all have the choice to move on. Sometimes we think we don't, mm -hmm. but maybe we move on from a bad relationship, uh, a bad employer, a bad customer. Um, mm -hmm. But that's sometimes important to understand that you don't have to feel out of control. So that would be one of, one of my secrets. Of, oh, that's great. I asked myself. I'm going to leverage that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. So the last thing, and then we'll let you get back to your life. Um, 
give us, and I say give quite purposefully, give us the gift of who are two or three leaders that you would think would be good guests for our audience? Well, some of them you've already had on your on your podcast, so I can't give those, so I won't repeat those, but um, there are women in my life that um, influence me that when I meet with them, I grow and I feel full um, okay. when we meet. And so um, one lady is Kara Parker, um, who I have worked with for over 25 years. Um, and she owns her own company and uh, actually in government contracting and in some other areas, Kara Parker, who owns CP Consulting and uh, a lot of wisdom there, but a lot of resources. Um, and then also um, my past board chair was Susan Coleman, and mm -hmm. she's had just such a wide variety of life experiences um, that she's very wise and then a new friend in the last few years to me actually is one of our cohorts on uh, Leadership Fredericksburg, but is Kimberly Young. Um, I always learn something from Kimberly, but what I get from all three of these women um, when I meet with them I, is um, I get knowledge, I get joy, and I walk away feeling full, but yet wanting more of their time and energy. I walk away energized. So wow. I think those would be excellent guests for you. Wow, three amazing names. Well, thanks so much. You've given us some invaluable insights, some invaluable advice, and now three invaluable referrals. Well, thank you so much, JR. Have a great day, and thanks for being here. Thank you. Absolutely.